Hello everyone, my name is Jim, and this is my good friend, lay minister, and author of All You Need Is Faith, Pedro Wilson, and we're two men in the Bible, and we're here to pump you up spiritually. That's right, amen. Hi, we just want to thank everybody for watching us, and we hope you had a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. The Lord has risen, and he's on his way soon. Matter of fact, during our, our Easter service, the Lord just not like a vision, but it gave me this the idea of thought of the angel Gabriel or, or Michael, one of the angels standing right in position, holding the horn, the trumpet, and he's just waiting. He's just waiting to blow that horn. He's waiting for God to look at him, and then that's it. That's how close we are until he comes. It's just one, see how Pedro's looking at me? God just has to look at, at the angel to blow the trumpet, and that's it. It's done. Yeah, it Look, it is, time is near, but you still have some time. You do have time, mm -hmm. not a lot, right, Jim? But you have time to go ahead and give your life up to Christ. That's right. So don't, don't hesitate or don't wait. Don't think that you have a lot of time. I'm mm -hmm. not saying, we're not saying tomorrow, next week. We don't even know. So why do you take that chance? And you've heard us say it time and time again, right? That's right. Why do you take that chance? Don't take that chance. No, you don't have to. No, you got it. This is the opportunity right here, right now. That is true. Um, just remember that Jesus Christ died for our sins on that cross. And, and if you give your heart uh, to Christ wholeheartedly, good things will happen. Now, granted, bad things come, right? The enemy comes at you. Mm -hmm. But the beauty is that uh, you have God backing you up. Who else would you rather have backing you up, man? Yeah, the creator. I That's know, right. the creator of heaven and earth, the creator That's of right. man, and, and the creator of everything. The creator of that little uh, bug on the floor, if you look down, uh, some of them, maybe someone did look down, oh my, what? No, what it is is that God created everything. And the beauty of it is, is that when he created us, he made us in his own image. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not mistakenly. God doesn't make mistakes. No, he doesn't. So He makes people. I'm going to be honest with you all. When you hear people say God made a mistake, it's not true. In fact, it's no. almost like blasphemy, right? Yeah, because you you're saying that God made a mistake. And in the same breath... They turn around and say God is perfect. So, like we say in Spanish, ¿Quién los entiende? Who understands where you're trying to come from? That tells, uh, you got to understand that if you say God is perfect, but he made a mistake uh, when someone was born, you're contradicting yourself. That's right. And unfortunately, the way Satan has controlled uh, so many people in this world, the simplest thing that they could hear and they turn it around and they and they come up with something in their own mind, Jim. That's right. right. They they turn things around and it's not true. And and what it does, it causes all sorts of chaos. It causes all sorts of things because we need to know that we're gonna be we're gonna be held accountable for whatever we do. For every word it says. For every word it says, right? Every word. Every word, we're going to be accountable. Not you, Jim. If I say something or I, or I twist something around for my own narrative and all that, it's not going to come down on Jim, even if I was to tell Jim something. Mm -hmm. It's going to come down on me. I'm going to be, be held accountable for every word. That's right. so, so when we get into the part of, oh, well, when I was born, the Lord made a mistake. No. Do you believe God is perfect? Well, yeah, but he made a mistake. So how in the world can you say in the same breath, yes, he is perfect, but he made a mistake? That's right. How is that possible? That's how come it's important that we listen and we understand where we come from. It doesn't matter even if you're following someone else or some of these preachers and big churches, mega churches, right? They, they see, that, that's what's so scary. They got to be very careful on what they say and how they, 
they, they see things and they interpret it not through God, but through their own eyes. And what we're going to do right now when we go into Genesis, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's pretty clear, right, Joe? That's right. It's, it's, it's nothing confusing. It's no. just pretty clear what God created. Yeah, it's, 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 it's black and white, basically. Yeah. Simple, same as black and white. And before we get there, I just want to say one thing about uh, Easter Sunday. We all know that Jesus hung on the cross for your sins. Right. Right? At the cross of Calvary. He was, he was, un, he was tried. Right? right? He was tried. Then he was spit on. He was ridiculed, laughed at, beaten, whipped, tortured carried a cross, and crucified on this cross for your sin. And guess what happens if you don't accept Christ? That sin still has to be paid. So there's, like I told the pastor, uh, on, at Calvary, there was three people there, Jesus and two thieves. thieves. And one of them said, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And, the one, and he said to the one, he said, today you'll be in paradise with me. The right. other one, the other one, since he died there, he's still hanging on the cross. He's hanging on the cross of hell forever and ever and ever. So if you don't accept Jesus, you will be in hell. You'll be spit on by demons. You'll be ridiculed by demons. You'll be beaten by demons. You'll be crucified for the end of time. Does that sound something you want to do? You know, Because somebody has to pay for your sin. That's it's right. It's either Jesus who did it because he loves you, or you can do it for yourself. That is true. It, the, the interesting part is that I was speak, I was talking to my wife and I were talking during mm -hmm. resurrection, and Judas, Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's right. He still washed his feet. Yeah. Right. He gave no him one really looks at it. He <laughs> gave he parted bread with him, and he still washed his feet. That's how much he loves us, and how humble. Jesus Christ is, was, he is. Walked, he washed Peter's feet and he knew he was going to deny him three, three times, times. That same day. So he knew all that and he still did it. Yeah. <laughs> he still became humble because he didn't have his own personal narrative in, involved in this, right? That's right. He was here for, what did he say? My father's business. That's right. And, and, and that's the thing. And, and, and what's even more mind-boggling. Now I was going to be quiet, but the Lord's getting to me right now. That's good. And, uh, Stir it up. You know, it is, because we might switch out. Let me go ahead and preach. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Palm Sunday, uh, Palm Wednesday, they were, they, he came in in a mule, right? Jesus yes. Christ. Uh -huh. And they were putting uh, palms and, and worship as a king, right? Mm -hmm. Those same people were spitting on him and, and, and yelling, crucify him, two days later. Yeah. And Jesus Christ said on the cross, Forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they do. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add on to that. When he was saying them, he wasn't talking about the Roman guard, just the Roman guards. He wasn't just talking about the Pharisees. He wasn't just talking about the crowd. You know who else he was talking about? He was talking about me. And he was talking about Pedro, and he was talking about you. Forgive you. Forgive me. Forgive Pedro for That's what right. we've done. That's what he's saying. As he hung out on the cross, he saw all for, of it there. For me, yeah. for Jim, for any individual. And that came uh, on Friday night when I read mm -hmm. Isaiah, right? He was uh, part of, what was it, Isaiah 53, I think. And what up there, I, I got a little quiet, and I said, you know how we're so used to saying Jesus, or you hear people say Jesus died for our sins, right? Mm -hmm. All of us. Yes, that's true. But I did challenge our church. I said, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and, and we understand he died for all of us. But why can't we make it as an individual thing? Remember I said that? And I mm -hmm. said, he died for my sins. That's right. And this confirmation, because before he even said that, I was sitting right there in the front pew. And I had that thought. I said, when he said them, he meant everybody. He meant me. Yep. Even before he said it, so when he said it, it was confirmation from the Lord himself. Yes, it's confirmation because we got to read it. He died for my sins. He died for Pedro's sins. He died for Jim's sins. I, again, we understand for all of us, right, that you hear it. But you take it, in, take it personal. He died for 
your sins and whoever you are point to yourself and know that Jesus Christ died for your sins personally mm -hmm. that's so awesome his love right if he yes if he since the time he died until now if every single person in the entire world for all that time frame all denied God and never accepted them and never had, and you it was just you just you he still would have done it yep he still because he done died it. for each and every he one. He would have done it just for you. He died for each and every individual. Instead of saying for us, yes. Yeah. But I'm trying to I'm trying to let you all know that it's an individual thing. Mm -hmm. You do not go to heaven. You're not going to heaven through osmosis. That's right. Right, Jim? Just because Jim is saved and all that, and I hang out with him and I rub his shoulder and I say, hey, we read the Bible together, but if I don't take Christ into my own personal life and accept him, guess what? When Christ comes, Jim's going, I'm staying. Wait, Lord, I hung out with Jim. I evangelized to people. I talked to him. Mm -hmm. But Christ will look at me and say, I never knew you. You never accepted me. As your personal savior, you don't go to you don't go to heaven on a bus. No, nope. you go on a bicycle. Yep. Or two, private, two, or two, look, the thing with two people on it, yeah. like those ones that have two people back to back. It's called it's Jesus. Yeah. yeah. What's it called? Tandem bike. A tandem bike. Uh, tandem bike. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. You don't go on a bus. You don't go on a bus. You don't. You don't go on a tandem bike. You go on your own private personal jet. Just you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. You go up with all that, just you yourself. No one's going to go up with you. Uh, people around you, but no one's going to hang on to you. Yeah, they can't yeah. grab your arm, your can't wife, your spouse, no. your kids. No one can grab up your arm and go with you. If they don't, if they're at the age where they cannot, they won't accept Jesus Christ. Guess what? They're staying, and we're going to uh, we're going to have such a great time up there in the at the marriage and our and the mm -hmm. and the banquet and everything. You know what? We're not going to remember you. No, you won't be remembered. You won't be remembered. Because there wouldn't be heaven. You'd and, be warning the people who are down here. You would never, you're going to yeah. forget them. And what's even worse are the ones that do know Jesus Christ and claim that they've accepted Jesus Christ. Yet, they're doing things for their own narrative. They're doing things to make themselves feel better. They're doing things and they're squashing beautiful things that are anointed, Jim. Yeah, that's right. You know, I just, this came, this came to me. The people who say, the ones that Jesus said, Go away from me and never knew you. The yeah. people who think they're saved but they're not, they're going to be even tortured even more in hell. Because yeah. those devils are going to be like, You thought you were getting into heaven. <laughs> you yeah, thought right. you were getting into you heaven. Didn't, you, didn't <laughs> you thought you were going into heaven because you, you helped grandma across the street. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Don't you feel stupid now? Yeah. We had all those chances. How many times has that video come out and told you to accept Jesus and you didn't? And you did it. All you did was go up there. Who's mm -hmm. a dummy now? Dummy. Yeah. I'm well, not, we're not trying to insult you all. We're just trying to make it real. Yeah. We're trying to let you all know. It, 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 why are we being attacked all the time? It's because we are putting Christ first and God first in our lives. Mm -hmm. And the sad, sad part is that people that claim to be Christians or claim to be, uh, what do they call themselves sometimes? A prophet. <laughs> or, or claim to be a true woman, man, child of God. Sometimes, without even thinking, because of their own ambitions, they try to squash something that's totally anointed. That's right. They, instead of they claim, what, listen to this, they identify. They, oh, oh, they identify. Now we're going to do what Jim is going to say. Yes, see, so, wow. wow. You know, the thing is, if you are truly one of those, uh, a prophet or a, or whatever, one of the ones you say is, uh, uh, yeah, you a, don't a have leader to. leader of a church or, or, you don't or, have or, or to, a group. You don't have to announce it. People just see it. See they it. see it through your actions, not by what you say. How many times did Jesus say, I'm Jesus Christ, son of God, look at me? He said, like, People just knew who he was. was. And, he, and it took him a while on the earth, for, not a while, but it did take him a little bit of time to finally say, now it's time. Yeah. The lady at the well, when she asked who she was, because up until then, right? Yeah. He said, don't tell, you know, who are you? Don't tell you until then. He said, okay, now. 
And when they, when they asked him, I am the son of God. Yes, but he did it on God's time. That's right. He could have marched up to that well and said, listen, lady, I'm the son of God. Kneel to me right now because every yeah. kneel's going to bow. He could have said that. He could have. And on the cross... <laughs> With the other, with the other thief that, that ended up getting his, well, I guess you know, hunt still hanging there, right? Yeah. He said, "Well, if you're the son of God, bring down your angels to take him out, take all these people out." He could have. He could have. But that's not that was not what his mission was with God. And you know what it was? It was God's. It was God's plan, and Jesus was part of, of course, a major part. But he loved us so much that. He went in, he knew what was going to happen beforehand, and he did cry in prayer, mm -hmm. remember, the night before. Mm -hmm. But the thing is this, when you try to identify yourself as a certain person, or a, yes. certain, or a certain position, or a certain, here I go, gender. Yes, right. God doesn't make mistakes. No, it says, we'll have our... Helper here, just gonna read it real quick. Usually it's at the beginning at the end, but read what it says in Genesis. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. Amen. Amen. See, it's not just about sin. I heard this message, right? So people say, well, it's a sin and all sins are the same, right? I could steal and lie or I can be a homosexual. It's all the same sin. Well, sin is sin, that's right. And all sins are the same, that's right. But it's not just sin is about your salvation into heaven. This right. is about creation. He created them, man and woman. Creation is physical, bodies, and he made it to be fruitful and multiply. If you have a transgendered man and a trans and, and a man and a transmitted man, uh, in 50 years, how many kids will they have? Zero. <laughs> Zero. You know, and it's interesting because we go back to that thing about God made a mistake, he did it. Mm -mm. You have churches that go and they, they have transgenders and everything and they accept that type of uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. God didn't make mistakes, so how can you worship, how can you say you love God and God loves you and God's perfect? Excuse me, but he made a mistake? No. Mm -mm. You made the mistake. You made the mistake yeah, in, in being fooled. You were manipulated. That's right. Like in your message. That's right. That's yeah, you were manipulated by uh, from the beginning of time. Now, we're not hating. We're just bringing what the Bible says because we're two men in the Bible. And let me go and tell you a little excerpt of what my study Bible. And it made a lot of sense because he spoke to me personally. It says all human beings are related. Going back to who? Adam and Eve. Eve. That's our parents. Going back. All people form a family that shares one flesh one, and blood. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember this. When prejudice enters your mind or hatred invades your feelings, each person is a valuable and unique creation of God. Each person is a valuable and unique creation of God. I even add on to that. They're also your brother or sister. That's true. I mean, literally, your we're, brother we're and not, your sister. We're not <laughs> hating. See, that's the problem, is that people take things and turn it all around. Oh, um, they're, they're saying that it's wrong. And the Bible says it's wrong, so they're judging me. No. We're saying that, yeah, the Bible's wrong. If I was doing something wrong, like uh, stealing, mm -hmm. right? The Bible says it's wrong. One of the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. Am I going to say, oh, everybody's judging me because I stole? Mm -hmm. I'm still doing wrong. It's on me. It doesn't matter if they're judging you. It's still wrong regardless if someone judges you or right. not. <laughs> you know, um, even as, as simple as things, you know, you hear uh, a lot of them, a lot of uh, pastors talk about adultery, drug addiction, and stuff like that, right? But we forget about the other sins that really aren't mentioned. Gossiping, mm -hmm. lying. The last song that lie, that's all right. A lie, right? Mm -hmm. Manipulation, pride. All those go fall within a certain type of sin. It, mm -hmm. it could be the beginning to lead into something like that. 
when we start doing things like that and turning things around for our own good to make ourselves feel better, isn't that has to do with selfishness? Didn't Christ say, don't be selfless? Mm -hmm. Instead of being selfish? I didn't want to be a fish. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So <laughs> what, he's, what we're trying to say is that, that God made uh, Adam from the ground, from the dust, mm -hmm. blew uh, life into his nostrils, and then from Adam, took a, he knew that he needed a partner. God said she, he needed a partner. Mm -hmm. Put Adam to sleep a little bit, took a rib out, and, and made Eve. Mm -hmm. Right? So Adam was created. Eve was just formed through Adam's rib. So created man, created and made woman. They had a son named Seth. That's right. Mm -hmm. So God did not make a mistake. Adam and Eve made the mistake. That's right. They listened to the fool. Yep, they listened to the fool. And that's the problem. Sometimes we don't understand and we allow the fool to manipulate our minds to think that we're doing right when it's actually wrong. Mm -hmm. So how come you gotta be that personal thing and stop thinking about what you want or what you think is good for yourself or whatever? Be true to yourself and be true to God. That's right, amen. So I know we rambled, it's been two weeks. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. but uh, we love you all. And if you're ever visiting us, yeah, we're here yeah, at, uh, what was well, the address again? Uh, oh, yes, yeah. uh, Whole World Gospel Center, 2509 South Elm Avenue in Sanford, Florida. Florida. If right. you ever, ever visit us, we have our service Sundays at, at 10 a.m. and our Bible Let's study at 6. 6. That's right, 6. Yeah, on Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesdays. Jim somehow got too excited and tossed the other card. Yeah. So here we go. This is our email. If you have any any uh, private prayer or you just want to reach out to us and say you guys are a bunch of nuts, you're wrong, whatever, you can email us at two men in a Bible twenty two at gmail dot com. That's two men in a Bible twenty two at gmail dot com. We already told you a service. Now, please give us a thumbs up. I've already asked you if you yeah. like, we've told you if you like us or not, still give yeah. us a thumbs up. If okay. you have any comments or anything like that, comment below. Yeah. In the description down below, there'll be a link to, to buy this man's book, All You Need Is Faith, at Amazon, and it's on sale. It's on sale, it dropped, it's on sale. So if you want, you can get it on sale. Also, if you want to give to our church, well, because we need uh, donations for our air conditioner, you can use PayPal or Cash App. Or you just want to sit, come visit us, come down and visit us. And the first two people that come in this Sunday, I will officially give them my official handshake who've never been here before. Yeah, um, I never got a handshake. Okay. Hey, there you go. Now I can see I got Jim's handshake. Uh -huh. Now, don't forget about sharing, right, Jim? Like you yeah, say, sharing, what is sharing? Is, sharing is caring. It's like a track to uh, share it with somebody else you love. There you go. Or even, well, we're supposed to love everyone. And if someone rubs you the wrong way, love them at a distance. But That's still right. love them. All right. Um, we love you all. We love you all. At a distance, since you're out there. Adios. Adios. God, have, uh, God be with you and have a blessed, blessed week. Yes, game over. Bye. Bye.